Uh, another um, uh, uh, issue that I want to uh, mention that uh, two days ago we had a talk uh, by Admiral Eric uh, McBedden, in which he uh, strenuously disagree with uh, the speaker previously, which is Robert Kagan. And I was a little puzzled as to why there was such a strong disagreement. And because I know Robert Kagan, and um, I didn't recall that he had views uh, like that exactly. And it turned out it was not Robert Kagan. It was uh, Robert Kaplan, uh, who used to uh, uh, teach at uh, the Pisac Department over there. And Admiral McBedden, uh, uh, after I pointed out to him, and he, uh, he recognized the mistake and sent me an email, so he, he asked me to basically to say that on record. Um, that's the record over there. <laughs> so, uh, as the doctor mentioned, uh, the two days before, the day, be the day before yesterday, we got a very good speaker, the Admiral McBadden. Okay, so oh, oh. anyway, so Admiral McBadden. Okay, so I'm really afraid, or oh, afraid to talk just after he's speaking because you know, it looks like uh, that he prayed as a curtain raiser for me, right? <laughs> so, but uh, so suddenly I I remind the Japanese comedian society community. So sometimes. So new comedian, when new comedian debut, you know, his master the prayer curtain raiser. So maybe maybe the other kindly pray as a curtain raiser for me. So now I'm starting. So no, about about one month ago, so Japanese Prime Minister Aso Taro or Taro Aso visit to Oval Office as a first foreign leader invited by President Obama. Now and a couple of weeks uh, ago, uh, a couple a couple of weeks before this visit, Hillary Clinton, Secretary of State, has visited to Japan, which was the first country for her to visit as a secretary. So President Obama sent very strong message that the new administration thinks that U.S.-Japan alliance is still a very significant. Of course, diplomacy is not simple as who as simple as who gets the first visit. So it is possible that this was more for show than because of their strong belief in the importance of U.S.-Japan relations. So even so, Japanese specialists about U.S.-Japan relations, especially uh, politician and senior government official, uh, sighed with relief and were reassured by this message because uh, they have uncomfortable experience and memory and the former Democrats' administration, uh, that was Clinton administration. Okay, so uh, because of the time limitation, I don't touch the detail about that, but in the single word, that is so-called Japan passing practice, okay? So which US did not consider Japanese position on decision-making process of diplomatic or economic policy. So for example, one time, so President Clinton visited Asian countries so without any single short stop to Japan. So that is Japan passing. Okay. So, 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 so Japan specialists of US-Japan relation worry about the second Japan passing. So to understand this, so the national security environment in Japan is necessary. That's why I select this top topic for my talking today. So of course, I think U.S.-Japan relation as ally is important for United States as well. Okay, but to Japan, the alliance is very critical and vital. Okay, to the United States, it is just critical. Okay. So I don't touch that today. Uh, if you are interested in it, I will open a new course, National Security Policy of Japan, in the next academic year. So please take it. Okay. <laughs> just advertisement, PR. So anyway. I have to back one, right? Okay. Previous one. Oh, I have trouble with my computer. Anyway, um, all right. So when we analyze national security environment, basically we need to do that by two different approach. The first one is static or inherent factors. The other is dynamic or external factor. In the case of Japan, the external factor can be categorized to 
uh, situation in vicinity of Japan and international or global situation. So now I'd like to start from Japanese geographic characteristic uh, is as static factor. So Japan locates just off the east edge of the Eurasian continent. The distance between the continent and Japan is less than 500 nautical miles. In some part, it is less than 400 nautical miles. So it means so if you start the coastline of the continent by destroyer and sprint it, so you can reach and pass through the island within 20 hours. And in the case of the airplane, the airplane can reach Japan within two hours. Okay. So this table shows so some geographic and demographic data. So please look at the second row. Okay, second row. Oh, no, no, second row. Okay. So the size of Japanese land mass is almost the same as California. And around 4% of whole US or China. However, if we measure the distance from north to south, this is very long. So this screen shows US map overlaid with Japanese map. So the length of Japanese landmass is almost the same as one from US Canadian border to US Mexican border. Okay. The actually, so this Japanese map uh, does not include the part from Kyushu Island to the Ryukyu or Okinawa. So its distance is almost the same as half of the four main islands. So if I add the part to this map, it goes down to the Yucatan Peninsula of the Mexico. Okay. So Japan is very small, uh, but very long and thin country, locating very close to the Eurasian continent. It means that Japan does not have enough strategic depth. Okay. We don't have enough strategic depth. Uh, this is very traditional Japanese anxiety on its national security. Okay. Now, please uh, back to the table and look at the first and third row. First and third row. Okay. So, so Japanese population is 127 million. Chinese population is roughly 10 times of the Japanese. And that of the US is 2.5 times. So as I mentioned, the Japanese, Japanese land mass is just 4% of the USA or China. But the notable datum is the size of arable or cultivable land. Only 12% of the land is arable for the large population. In the case of the USA, arable land per capita is 1.5 acre. Okay. The China has around 0.3 acre per capita, while Japan has only 0.08 acre. Okay. This is one of the reasons that Japanese self-sufficient ratio for the food is very low. So right now, the ratio is now 39% on the calorie basis. So Japan is heavily depending on other country to feed its people. So Japan also relies on other country for natural resource because it can produce little natural resource, almost nothing. So symbolic one is petroleum and natural gas. Now we, we import 99.6% of petroleum and 96.4% of natural gas. Okay. And 89% of the oil comes from Middle East. In sum, without sea lift and trade, Japan cannot survive. Okay. They cannot prepare, you know, prepare us but also cannot survive. So Japan also, uh, no, no, that's, that's other characteristics. Japan has two inherent vulnerabilities. One is lack of strategic depth. So other one is overseas dependency. So I'd like to step into the external factor. The first one is international situation beyond our region. So there is a lot of problem all over the world. So so, so I don't like to list and explain them, but a kind of world view uh, can provide us with a good big picture of Japanese national security environment in the context of international situation. Uh, you, have, you have heard the name of this arc before. It is named the arc of instability. Okay? So within the arc, uh, there is a lot of security concern, like uh, activity of international terrorist organization, piracy, rivalry among countries and insurgency. Okay. 
And that reflects the reality of the, un the unstable international situation. So I mentioned that Japan heavily rely on other countries for its natural resource and food. Bad news for Japan is that one of the sea line of communication sustaining Japan is, is over up this arc. Okay. So how to ensure this sea line of communication is a big concern of Japan. So this is quite busy slide of area surrounding Japan. So talking about global level, generally people concern about new type threat like terrorism, prolif proliferation of WMD or piracy. Okay. However, when we look over this region, so we could be bring back to very traditional international system. Okay. There are many seeds of the traditional type conflict. So Japan has three territorial disputes with its neighbors. So one is Northern Ireland. Okay. So Japan claimed the sovereignty of the island, so which was occupied, uh, which has been occupied since just after World War II. Okay. So second is Takeshima Island. Okay. So the Korean name, Korea names it to Tokto. So it has been ruled by South Korea since 1952. And the, la the last one is Senkaku Island, this, uh, this island, okay? So which is currently controlled by Japan. So China and Taiwan claim it, and the, and the Chinese call the island Yu Dia Dao, okay? Uh, actually, as a Japanese government employee, so I cannot say Senkaku Island issue is a territory dispute because my government does not define this as territory dispute. However, in this forum, in this forum, as a USNA faculty, I introduced this issue as a territory dispute from neutral point or neutral position. So anyway, so additionally, on Southeast China Sea, okay, so China and some Asian country have territory dispute over partial island and the spratory islands. And also, Japan and China have other dispute. So over the boundary of exclusive economic zone, or EEZ, of East China Sea. So while China argues the boundary should be just west of Ryukyu Islands, or Okinawa Islands, so Japan insists it should be the middle line, like this. So those are kind of traditional seeds of conflict. Okay. So likewise, likewise, we have problem concerning WMD of North Korea. So right now, it's a very hot issue. Okay. And uh, you know very much about this the issue of the North Korea. But uh, Japan has also the issue of Japanese people abducted by North Korea. So it makes things more complicated. There is also Taiwan threat issue. So, you know, Chinese, Chinese, China officially does not abandon the military option to liberate Taiwan. Okay. As long as Taiwan identified itself as a part of China, so it is okay. So, but uh, once, Chinese, uh, was, once tai Taiwanese try to get independence, so there is some possibility for China to apply its military option. So the conflict may influence Japan because the area is so close to us. So because of this complicated situation, there is a lot of military activity by the actors, so China, Korea, Russia. And of course, conversely, so these countries think there is a lot of military activities by Japan and the US. So unfortunately, so because of the diversity in the nation and the religion and the views of a security situation and the threats and the political system. So far, there is no regional security organization to be capable to deal with a complicated situation. Of course, some particular issue is dealt by the multilateral, multilateral diplomatic scheme, like uh, six-party talks. But uh, generally, so the countries are still living under a very primitive international system. 
So here are summary of the security environment we face, or Japan face. So the first one, the first one so stems from the vulnerability, as I mentioned. So talking about second one, okay. oh, second one. So while the Japanese thinks the probability of a full-scale invasion are almost zero, we don't think you know, there is big pro pro uh, possibility of the full-scale invasion. But maybe such a kind of territorial, territorial security issues, okay, like a territorial dispute, or a new threat or a challenge exist in, the, in this region. Okay. So there are, there are a lot of seeds of the traditional type conflict on the local basis. And as to, as to international or global level, as 9-11 clearly showed, we face new threats such as international terrorism and the threat of prolifer proliferation of the w WABD. So it might break the stability of the international system, so which Japan rely on. So under the Cold War, these problems did not come up to the surface because the control of the two superpowers was very strong. Or sometimes any conflict tended to be take, taken advantage of, by, advantage of by one superpower to check its other counterpart. In other words, Jap in those days, Japan lived in the stable condition under the threat of full-scale invasion of s by Soviet Union. But now, Japan is living in the unstable condition without the full-scale invasion threat. So considering the security environment, so Japan defined two objectives of Japanese national security. The first objective is to prevent any threat from reaching Japan and in the event that it does, so repair, repair it and minimize any damage. The second objective is to improve the international security environment or maintain the stability of the international system. So that also contributes to the first objective by reducing the chance that any threat will reach Japan. So in order to achieve the, these two goals, we take three approaches. The first, Japanese own effort. Okay. The second one is to maximize the effect of the Japan US security arrangement. So US presence can deter the regional conflict while Japan provides infrastructure to the US presence. And also, one side can supplement counterpart capability gap. So believe it or not, so Japan Maritime Self Defense Force of or JMSDF can do something that US Navy cannot do. So Japan's own effort and the Japan US security arrangement is considered as a significant approach to the both goal, while the third approach, cooperation with the international community, may mainly work for the improving international security environment. Talking about cooperation with the international community, peacekeeping activity and reconstruction of the countries damaged by conflict or natural disaster are typical efforts Japan has done. So we could possibly provide maritime governance with other countries side by side. So for example, so far, Japan has shared the concern on the unstable situation of the slope in this arc. Okay. So there is some possibility for such a country to provide a kind of governance over the arc. In area, for example, in area surrounding Japan, Japan might provide sub-governance. And around Morocco Strait, some Asian country can provide patrol, can provide patrol force. And India might take care of Indian Ocean. And the uh, US and the EU can provide or deal with the Red Sea to the Arabian Sea. That is some possibility. So right now, I'm not sure, I, whether or not we can count, we can count China. Okay. So these goals, and these goals and approaches are very reasonable. But it is not so simple or easy for Japan to translate these goals and approaches 
to concrete action or policy in reality. There are two major challenges for that. The first one is redefinition of Japan-US security arrangement. The second is how should Japan use what kind of capability to achieve the goal for its national security or, the in, or on the international stage. So these challenges are stemming from the gap between the constitutional or legal constraint and the US or other countries' expectation for Japan. And also gap between the constitutional or legal constraint and ideal option for using military or Japan's self-defense force. So for example, just two weeks ago, Japanese government ordered JMSDF to dispatch two destroyers to deal with Somali pirates. Also, JMSDF P36 squadron is preparing for deployment to the region. In the area, so many countries already deployed their surface combatant to ensure the safety of the sea lift. So ideally, those Japanese assets should protect not only Japanese ship, but other flagship. However, under the current legal scheme, it is very difficult, not impossible, very difficult for them to protect ship under another, control, another country's flag. The reason is that because our constitution strictly prohibits use of force or threat to settle international conflict, the Japanese legal system has assumed that Japan's self-defense force or JSDF protects things under Japanese authority. So here is a kind of gap between ideal option or expectation for Japan and legal constraint. So I need to explain more complicated issue to avoid your misunderstanding. Actually, this legal constraint is not constitutional constraint. So considering constitutional constraint, the legal system about self-defense force has been more strictly designed than constitutional constraint itself. Therefore, if a new law is enacted, it enables SDF to protect other countries' ship. As well, there is typical misunderstanding about the constraints. That is, that JMSDF ship cannot defend US naval ship. Actually, under peacetime, to some extent, that is true. But under wartime, JMSDF ship can defend US Navy that is operating to defend Japan. Also, even under peacetime, if we got, if there is some condition to meet with our constraint, still we can provide some protection to the US assets. Okay. So it's kind of very complicated. So how to fill the gap? So one simple, solu one simple solution is that Japan comes to be so-called normal country <coughs> without such a constraint. In predictable future, it is not practical. Therefore, we are pursuing a kind of realistic approach. That is con continuous redefinition of the Japan-US security arrangement. So without question, the basis of the Japan-US alliance is the Japan-US security treaty. The purpose of the treaty is the maintenance of the security of Japan and international peace and security in the Far East. However, it was concluded under the Cold War. Therefore, the assumed role and mission of both parties was to deal with or deter a kind of full-scale invasion by Soviet Union. However, the redefinition of the alliance has been necessary since the end of the Cold War. So one remarkable turning point for the alliance is the Japan-US Joint Declaration on Security in 1996. So in the declaration, we reaffirmed the significance of the alliance so for maintenance, peace, and stability in the Asian Pacific region. And both sides agreed with a common strategic objective in the region and global wide. 
So these objectives are continuously reviewed to meet with the current situation. And once the objectives are identified, in turn, basic concept of, of road mission and capability uh, will, be, will be clarified. Okay. So, and, and then some part of the concept will be able to apply it to international cooperation. So in conclusion, so Japan is living in unstable security environment without the possibility of full-scale uh, invasion. But because of its vulnerability, stabilizing the situation is very critical and vital for Japan. So we center the Japan-US alliance on the effort to stabilize the situation and redefine the alliance continuously. And then, the putting the product to use, we enhance international cooperation to stabilize the international situation. So that is course of, so course of, course of action of Japan. So I'm stopped here.